In this Nike Tempo Next Percent review, we will explore whether $200 is worth it for a running shoe. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, and these are the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent. I've been looking forward to checking these out ever since they did the announcements with all the cool things that were going on with the Olympics, but everything getting pushed around, coronavirus, all kinds of things, but fortunately I have them in hand now and I want to talk to you about my experience in them and most importantly, I want to be able to figure out like for $200, like what exactly are we getting with this shoe? Let's begin with the overall design. Let's start with these AirPods. I mean, first of all, what's better than one AirPod, but you get two and in this particular colorway, you get them in different colors. So you get this red and you get this blue. Think of the AirPods as like the captain of the energy return. And then think of the Zoom X and the React Foam as the foot soldiers, literally, because there's Zoom X in the overall footbed, and then it flows back towards the heel where you've got this React Foam. I thought that the blending of these three things worked just better for my foot in the way that I run, even more so than the Alpha Fly. Next, you've got the composite plate. I can't really show it to you here, but I was able to find something on the behind design about this shoe. And it's actually made of more of a composite. And so this uh, gives a decent amount of rigidity so that you're not sinking totally in the foam, but it gives you a nice pop as you're running. To be honest, I wasn't really sure if I would like it because the carbon fiber plate to me where it didn't bother me, I thought it was like really good. Well, this is, for me, from a training standpoint, is even better because it's just more flexible. Next, moving on to the blown rubber outsole. I'm just a big fan of rubberized shoes. I think it just helps with the overall upkeep of the shoe. I don't necessarily love foam that gets really dirty, although there is some exposed here. And I like that with this in comparison to the Alpha Fly, you've got additional rubber here that isn't painted over and you, you can see it and there's actually just more of it along this. So I think that's going to add to the overall durability of the shoe. So next you've got these asymmetrical laces, which I'm also a big fan of because it just wraps around your foot. And I feel like it's actually just more natural to what's going on. I know most shoes just put it right down the middle, but our feet actually go like this. So why not have laces that do the same? And then we'll have the overall fly knit material upper. Uh, I found it to be pretty breathable. I like that it's reinforced in the toe as well as the heel. You've got the pull tab here, you've got the overall construction that creates a situation where you can use the, with this kind of like makeshift tongue area is another opportunity uh, for a pull tab. The design before you put this on your foot feels like a $200 type of situation. You've got to kind of like contour your foot a little bit. It's a little weird. The opening I feel like isn't as wide as it potentially could or should be, but it, just, it takes a moment or two to kind of get that right. If you ever try it on the Zoom Fly Flyknit, you'll know what I'm talking about. First and foremost, I went with an overall 11 and a half. And so I think about it from how, how's the room in the toe box, how's the room in the midfoot, and then how does it feel in terms of like the heel collar type area. So in terms of the toe box, this shoe, as you can see from the base, is pretty wide. I have a pretty narrow foot, and so I would have liked something that was narrower. If you have a wider foot, however, that might not be a big issue for you. The midfit for me was pretty solid, and I think that has a lot to do with not only the material, the amount of space they give you, but also the lacing. So I feel like I was able to get that into the place I wanted it. And then in terms of the overall heel collar, uh, I felt like I was fine in terms of that. And also you've got this kind of lozenge back here that's gonna help you with just your overall foot placement. So no heel slippage or anything like that. So when it comes to the overall height of the shoe, once you have them on foot, they are somewhat tall. And I know that the measurements say that they're taller than the Alpha Fly. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the React is sitting underneath this uh, Zoom X. But on my foot, because of the way that the offset is uh, set up, I feel more stable in this than I did even in the Alpha Fly. And I actually enjoyed the, the overall like feel like on my foot there, but these just felt more like, oh, I can warm up, cool down, and do my workout in these shoes. So let me talk about performance. The first thing I look at is a little something I call OTBC, which just means out the box comfort. And they nailed it. It's like, let me just get out for like 15 minutes. I just wanna just, just do something to just kind of perk up my day a little. I went out for 30. And so I was like, okay, like these feel really good. And it begins with the energy, like the energy return was real in a very meaningful way. I inserted some surges in there as well. And I was like easily above like 15, 30, and at one point even 40 seconds above my easier pace without a lot of effort. 
And so I was like, oh, like these are legit. So then, then I took it out for the longer run, which I think certainly did uh, an outstanding job. These are lighter than say like the Nike Pegasus 37. They're gonna offer a little bit more structure. And so I was able to average around like eight minutes or so on the same type of effort or energy that I would put into running like an 820 or 830 um, per mile. And I was able to do that for 90 plus minutes. Well, the long run, easy run, that's cool, but the shoe is called a tempo, right? Tempo threshold runs, absolutely the shoe that I reach for. And here's why. When I talk about tempo run, I'm talking like 30 to 40 seconds slower than my 5K pace. This shoe doesn't need to be the fastest shoe that I own, but for those type of runs, when I'm out on the road or if I'm on the track, you know, banging out some, you know, mile or 1K intervals, this is a shoe that I'll be reaching for. In times past, I just kind of just would go with my everyday training shoe. I felt like my shoes that were lighter than that, I just felt like my body just didn't feel good in them. These are something that I feel comfortable rocking out with. There's enough support in these to take these out for easier runs. However, I would not recommend this as a daily trainer just because there's so much technology and innovation going on here that you're gonna miss out on some of the structure that I believe that you need from just getting a daily trainer in, and then you break this out for kind of faster things. Now, I said before, I would not take these past my 5K pace, and I even took them out to the track and, and did some decent interval work in them, and they're cool. I just feel like I would rather have like a racing flat or a spike when it comes to running anything faster than mile pace. I'm putting together a really good design, a fit that was pretty good. We got some dope performance. And so now it's like, all right, who would I recommend this for? Well, first and foremost, if you struggle with picking a tempo shoe because you just felt like, hey, there weren't ones that look cool, then I'm recommending this. If you're looking for a training shoe that you can race in, so I'm talking now specifically to those of you that love like the Zoom Fly, Fly Knit, um, and you don't want to pay the price that is associated with the Alpha Fly or Vapor Fly, I can recommend this. One big caveat I'll put on all of this though, and I'll say this again, this is not a daily training shoe. And I would think that you would be better off to pair it with something like a Pegasus. Or if you like more like the Max Cushioning route, then go something like the React Infinity Run. Now, for those of you that are talking about this as a companion for the Alpha Fly, well, this kind of puts you in a really awkward position because that forces you into a situation where you absolutely need three pair of shoes. You would have your racing shoe, your tempo issue, and then your everyday shoe. I do my best to try to think about, all right, how can I have the least amount of shoes possible? Now, clearly I just showed you four shoes over the course of this video, but that's for demonstration type purposes. So for $200, you're gonna get premium materials. You're gonna get a pretty good fit. Just make sure that you choose wisely when it comes to that. And performance across the range of paces that I just expressed, you absolutely are getting what you pay for in this situation. And as a, a thing that I think about a lot when it comes to buying these kind of like luxury or premium type trainers, you're getting something that pros use. And that to me is just kind of like a cool element. And that's what I'm looking for in a $200 training shoe. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about the Nike Tempo Next Percent. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.